Hey everyone, so we are back today with a new um, installment of Frightful Fridays. Um, as I said in my last uh, Vlogtober vlog, I think, I'm so sorry that there was no Frightful Fridays last Friday since I was on that trip. I explained it in that video, but I just wanted to mention it here as well. Thank you for your understanding and your patience with that. I'm so sorry that there was no um, Frightful Friday video last Friday. Getting right back into it today with a new one. I'm actually very excited about this one because um, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be talking about the Mothman. And if you know anything about the Mothman, it's totally okay if you don't, because we're going to talk about it here. But if you do, you know that the origin of the Mothman is in a place called Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And you can actually visit this place. Obviously, it's a town in West Virginia, and it's a huge tourist attraction. And my parents and my brother and sister actually visited Point Pleasant, I believe back in 2016, a couple years ago now. Um, and so I have a lot of pictures from their trip, which is really cool and really awesome. Of course, you can find pictures online. A lot of the stuff that they saw, you can uh, Google as well. But I'm going to be having a mixture of both um, in this video today, which I just think is so cool. When we talk about uh, Frightful Fridays, you guys know uh, we talk about anything mythical that could be real, could not be real. We're not super sure, paranormal, whatever. Um, and we try to put some facts behind it with real life accounts. And this could not get more real life because my family actually went there and I have some actual pictures that they took of just the different things they experienced and saw when they went on this trip. And I just think that is so cool. So um, if you know the style of this video that I do, I kind of just insert pictures randomly as I'm talking or videos or TikToks as I'm talking. So that's gonna be um, the same today. So um, with these real life pictures that my family took. Just kind of make sure you're glancing at the screen from time to time because I don't know when I film this exactly where I'm going to put in pictures that comes when I edit. So I'll just kind of, they'll be randomly showing up on the screen like usual. I'll try to put captions on the picture so you guys know like uh, where it is in Point Pleasant or what the picture is of. Uh, like I usually try to do, but just so you guys know, there's going to be some real life pictures that my mom and dad took. So, and I think my sister and brother took some too, but we have a whole bunch of things to discuss. The Mothman really fascinates me, um, kind of just puts a little more realness behind it. So yeah, I think that's really cool and I hope you guys like it. And like I said, I'm going to try to caption everything so you know exactly what it is, but I'm not going to be like, oh, here's this picture because I don't know exactly where I'm going to put them in the videos yet. So a really long winded way to explain that there will be some unique pictures today. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get on into it because I'm rambling. Also look at my cute spooky earrings this time that I have. I think we've done the bats and the pumpkins with cats so far, but these are one of my faves. These are my little skeleton boys. I've had these for a few years now. I like these because you can actually take off the body <laughs> and just wear the head if you want. But you know, for these videos, I like to go all out. And I just think these are so cute too. I would wear these in public or um, to my job or whatever. So anyway, now we're gonna get on into it because I've been rambling. So we're gonna start talking about the Mothman. Okay, so when discussing the Mothman, you guys obviously need to know what he is, who he is, and where he comes from first. This is kind of a unique case because it's, it's fairly recent um, and there's even like modern day, a lot of different things that people equate to the Mothman having something to do with it. So the Mothman originally is from, like I said, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. That's where he was first heard of and was discussed back in the 60s, which we'll get into. Now, he can also be known as the Birdman or the Winged Man. Uh, that is uh, something worth noting because he could go or be known by a couple different names, or I say he, but this creature um, could go by a couple different names, but he is most known as the Mothman. Now, the Mothman, like I said, is from or originates in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. That is where we heard the first account of the Mothman and actually where the first like newspaper article was published about him and all different things. So Point Pleasant is a small town in West Virginia. Um, in the 2010 census, the population of Point Pleasant was 4,350 people. It is a city in Mason County, West Virginia. Now, the Mothman is known to be a humanoid-like creature that was seen uh, primarily in the Point Pleasant area from November 15th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. So a little bit over a year is when um, the traction for the Mothman really took off when that first 
uh, sighting was reported. And then from there, it really gained traction within the next year, not only through media, but through certain authors. Okay, so to start to understand like where this first account came from, we kind of need to know a little bit about the area of Point Pleasant and Mason County, West Virginia in general, because that really pertains to where this first account occurred and um, what they think the Mothman's home is. So anyway, there's an area in Point Pleasant, it's actually right outside of Point Pleasant, is about seven miles north of Point Pleasant, still in Mason County. It's known as the TNT area by the locals. Now this TNT area is what it's referred to as by the locals. The locals have given it this name. Now currently this area is actually an overgrown wildlife preserve. It's now in its peak operation, this um, TNT area was actually a $45 million power plant and it employed almost 3,500 people or over 3,500 people at its peak operation. And its peak operation was from 1942 to 1945. Now, like I said, now it is an overgrown wildlife preserve that many locals um, still frequent. It is very close to Point Pleasant. Now back at its peak operation, this area in World War II was used to house many explosives. There is almost 100 large concrete domes, which can also be referred to as igloos or bunkers, which I know my parents have given me some pictures of, so I will start to include a few of those. Um, but these uh, concrete domes were actually built into the ground um, in this TNT area to house different explosives in World War II. So you kind of get the idea here. It's a TNT area as given by the locals because in World War II they housed many, many explosives in this specific area. And these bunkers were kind of built into the ground or these domes were built into the ground so that planes could not actually see them from the air. And there are a lot of Mothman sightings in this area, including the first sighting, which leads many locals to believe that the Mothman actually lives in this area, in this TNT area, um, as known by the locals. And they specifically think that he lives in what is called the North Power Plant. They think that that is his home. And there has been several sightings, including the first sighting at this TNT area, but it is rumored and just accounted for by many different people, especially teenagers, that the Mothman would chase them at speeds of up to 100 miles an hour away from the area. So that leads people to claim that the Mothman is very flat fast when flying, um, but a lot of people say that when he, that they've seen him and when he's on his feet, he's kind of clumsy. And Okay, so the first account, and arguably one of the most notable accounts of the Mothman, is called the Scarberry and Millet sighting. Now, it's called this because the first account that was published in papers was a sighting by two different couples that were together at the time, and they were driving around the TNT area. And this, the account basically goes as follows. Um, on November 15th, 1966, there were two young couples from Point Pleasant. Um, one of the couple's names was Roger and Linda Scarberry, and the other couple's name was Steve and Mary Millette, thus the Scarberry and Millette sighting. So basically this couple, I'm not sure if they were on like a double date or what exactly was going on. I do believe they were in the same vehicle though, and they were driving near and around the TNT area. So they were driving around this area and eventually they saw this thing that they described as quote, a large gray creature whose eyes glowed red when the car's headlights shone on it. A large flying man with 10 foot wings. They claimed that the creature chased them flying in their vehicle at 100 miles per hour, so they estimated, all the way to the outskirts of town. Then it scuttled into a nearby field and disappeared. So they were basically chased by this creature and then upon it disappearing is when they decided to call the police and report it. They were entirely terrified and I can only imagine, I mean, I don't know what I would do if that happened to me, but, um, they were completely spooked by this whole situation. And like I said, they saw this huge creature with glowing eyes when the headlights shone on him and they it chased them out to the outskirts of town in their car. Now this first sighting happened, like I said, on November 15th, 1966. The first newspaper report about this specific um, incident of this sighting was published in the Point Pleasant Register and it was dated November 16th, 1966. The title of the article was, quote, couples see man-sized bird, creature, something. So as soon as the media got a hold of this, they totally, I mean, at least made it look like they um, believed 
the couples that this happened to and they immediately published it um, and that's kind of how the Mothman gained its first little bit of traction. Now this initial sighting actually kind of set the tone for what became a very sensationalized um, situation in Point Pleasant. After this first sighting, over the next several days, there were just countless other people who had also seen what they thought was the Mothman, who had reported seeing him, seeing his glowing eyes, seeing a figure just like him. All types of locals throughout the whole town immediately took hold of this and said, hey, like I've seen things like that too. Weird things have happened to me. Um, I saw this creature and then something bad happened. Um, all kinds of different sightings came out. One of the most notable ones that came out after this initial um, Millette and Scar Scarberry sighting was two volunteer firefighters saw it and said it was a quote, large bird with red eyes. At least eight additional sightings were reported within three days of the original sighting. So people immediately were like, I don't know if maybe they thought they were crazy before, but then somebody actually spoke up and said something. So they thought they would share their story too. You never know, some people could be making it up, but many sightings came out within just a few days. So there was the one about the firefighter and then there was actually a gentleman, a gentleman by the name of Newell Partridge. And I believe he was a contractor and he had a very specific site. Um, he claimed that he saw strange patterns and sounds appearing on his TV and he heard really um, just weird uh, noises coming from his TV screen one night. And then he, immediately after seeing this happen to his TV, he heard a very uh, mysterious sound just outside of his house. So he went outside to investigate and he aimed a flashlight at a creature that he saw in a field that was nearby his house. And this creature in the near nearby field, um, Mr. Partridge said its eyes glowed, quote, like bicycle reflectors. Now his German Shepherd dog also went missing right around the time of this sighting. And he actually believes that he saw the Mothman and that the Mothman is responsible for his poor German Shepherd dog disappearing as well. Um, so that came shortly after the first sightings that were published in the Point Pleasant Register. Now keep in mind, this is just back in the 1960s. So it is really not that long ago. Now, as these sightings came out, of course, skeptics came out as well. And many people were just saying that these sightings were an unusually large heron, which is a large bird, could also have possibly been a crane, or some people even said they're probably just seeing a large owl um, because owls' eyes do reflect in the nighttime. I'm not sure about cranes and herons, there's my two, but that is kind of what a lot of skeptics justified these sightings as, was just a very large bird that people were seeing that maybe was like out of its migration pattern or was possibly mutated from what used to be the explosive um, TNT area back in the 40s. Um, so this TNT area is just very popular for the locals. Um, and like I said, they believe that is where the Mothman's home is, which would make sense because it is just outside of town and everybody in Point Pleasant knows about the Mothman. So. It would make sense if he lived somewhere right on the outskirts like that. It is a huge nature preserve now, so he could be hiding anywhere in the wilderness. Uh, there's several different parts that are overgrown and like inaccessible to most humans. So he definitely could, or it definitely could be out there um, in that area. And I don't think the locals would necessarily be wrong to assume that he would live in a place like that since he is just kind of like this wild creature that seems to come out of nowhere in the woods and different things like that and, and chase people away. Now, since the first publication in the Point Pleasant Register, uh, that kind of took off for the Mothman. After that first publication, uh, the national press actually soon heard of the story and they spread it across the entire United States. So this story became big quick. So as soon as that first post was made in the newspaper, the national media got a hold of it and soon it was printed all over the US. There was all kinds of stories all over the US about this Mothman. So it quickly became basically national news back in the 60s. Of course, things were different back then, but after that first publication and the um, Millette Scarberry sighting is really when it took off. So there could have definitely been sightings um, and just different accounts before the 60s, uh, but this specific sighting of the two couples that were chased out of the TNT area is really what gave the Mothman the traction that it still has today. Um, because like I said, national news then picked up on it and ran the story all across the country. And before it was just a little town in West Virginia. So it really took off after that. Now into the seventies, there was a man by the name of Gray Baker 
Hello, Editing Hannah here. I misspoke. His name is actually Gray Barker, not Gray Baker. So sorry about that, but did just want to clarify. And he actually introduced the, he was a UFOologist. He introduced the notion of the men in black um, to UFO fo folklore. That is an actual, uh, very real thing that uh, many UFOlogists believe in. And this great Barker actually got wind of the Mothman and he introduced the notion to his audience. So that spread the Mothman's um, name even further. This gentleman who was a writer and a big name in the UFO, ufologist, paranormal kind of community started speaking about the Mothman and he was giving his audience information about the Mothman, which gained the Mothman even more traction. And then even later in 1975, there was an American journalist, an influential ufologist, and his name was John Keel. And he popularized the Mothman even more. Some of you guys may have heard of him because he wrote a book called The Mothman Prophecies. And this book was later turned into a movie in 2002 called The Mothman Prophecies. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But after John Keel uh, wrote that book in 1975, The Mothman gained even more traction. So we go from national media taking a hold of it back in the late 60s all the way up now to 1975. You have many... Um, people who have careers and like studying UFOs and aliens and different things like that, authors uh, like John Keel uh, reaching their audience with the name of the Mothman. So he is basically out there now. He is everywhere and everyone is learning about him, especially people who are interested in um, this type, this side of the world and also people who even do it for a living. So the Mothman's name was really getting out there to basically every corner of the United States. Like I said, we'll discuss the Mothman Prophecy movie here in a minute because it does pertain to what I'm about to discuss. But before we do, I have to note that like most of the things we talk about, the Mothman is thought to be sort of a bad omen. And if you see the Mothman or he is spotted near somewhere, many people believe that that is, um, basically foreshadowing of some type of tragedy that's going to happen either to you or to the area you're around. Um, lots of people have claimed to have seen the Mothman before the Chernobyl disaster of 1986, the Mexican swine flu outbreak of 2009, and the 2011 nuclear disaster in Fukushima, Japan. Uh, many people have claimed to see the Mothman um, just before all of these disasters happened, there has been like claimed sightings of uh, many disasters happening and the Mothman being seen right before. Many people believe he is a very clear sign of a bad omen. Some people actually um, believe that the Mothman is either an alien, a supernatural manifestation of human fear, so something kind of out of like sleep paralysis, or even a mutated animal that we previously have not discovered. So. Lots of speculation for what the Mothman could be, but like I said, he is most noted for being present right before a tragedy strikes. And actually one of the most popular accounts of this is the collapse of the Silver Bridge. That is a very significant and spooky one that I'm sure you guys have heard of, but if you haven't, I'm here to tell you. Okay, so if you remember, I said that John Keel um, published that book called The Mothman Prophecies in 1975. And after he published that book, Point Pleasant actually became a hot spot for uh, conspiracy theorists and like paranormal activity experts, UFOologists, fans of the paranormal. It really became a popular tourist attraction. So you could say um, his book really gained the small town of Point Pleasant a lot of traction. And it became very well known across all of the United States. So in his book, John Keel actually claims that there are very supernatural ties connected to the Mothman, as well as supernatural events that relate to the sightings of the Mothman. He also claimed that the creature, the Mothman creature, was directly connected to the collapse of the Silver Bridge. Now, if you don't know what the Silver Bridge is, the Silver Bridge was a suspension bridge that was actually built way back in 1928. and. Basically, it connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia to Ohio, and it went across the Ohio River. December 15, 1967, a year after the original Mothman sighting, traffic was absolutely horrendous on this silver bridge. And remember, it went over a river. This bridge actually tragically collapsed uh, due to the weight of the rush hour traffic. 31 vehicles actually fell into the river and it killed 46 people and injured nine. So this was a horrific tragedy. The bridge basically failed and gave out. So the bridge basically was just not built to withstand the test of time and eventually collapsed. And it was basically said that 
um, if one tiny thing was to go wrong with the bridge, it would all come crumbling down. So kind of like a house of cards, you tip one thing and the whole thing falls, which tragically is what happened. Directly following the collapse of this bridge, many locals came forward and said that they had seen the Mothman by the bridge, around the bridge, or they had just seen him shortly before the collapse. They, There were all different accounts and claims of seeing the Mothman right before this bridge collapsed, leading people to believe that the tragedy was directly connected to the Mothman, which also led John Keel to write about that in his book. Like I said, that was published later in 1975. The bridge collapse happened in 1967, and he directly wrote about how the Mothman was connected to the collapse of this bridge in that book. Now, this book was later turned into a movie, like I said, and it actually starred Richard Gear, I think is how you say his name, Richard Gear and Laura Linney. And this was a um, very, very prevalent thing, I believe, in the book and the movie that uh, this bridge collapse was totally connected to the Mothman. And if you remember, like I said, a lot of people believe that the Mothman is um, a sign of a bad, or that the Mothman is a bad omen. And they also equate him to the other tragedies that I had listed earlier. And kind of the same thing, this tragedy would happen and then uh, shortly before or after the tragedy, people had been claiming they had seen the Mothman basically around the area. And then a little bit later on, just in 1969, they uh, actually rebuilt the bridge and it was called the Silver Memorial Bridge. And it is still um, up to date, I believe, but that was built just shortly after the collapse of the bridge in 1967. Okay, so now for some more real life accounts. Um, you guys tell me what you think about that bridge collapsing and just about the Mothman in general. Now you have kind of an understanding of who the Mothman is. Uh, when he was first sighted, what locals are saying about this, and now we're going to get into some more modern day and also a little bit more real life accounts, as well as the current state of the town of Point Pleasant, because I also think that is very interesting. The town today, the town of Point Pleasant, still very much recognizes the Mothman and actually has many statues and many different um, attractions surrounding the Mothman. Um, I, you could say, you could argue that some of it is purely tourist, but obviously the TNT area is actually there and many locals definitely believe in the Mothman. They believe he's somebody you should not m mess with. Um, and the town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia also just has a lot of like history with it. There's actually a hotel at Point Pleasant that is called the Logue Hotel and it is known to be a very haunted hotel. It was very high class, high society. Um, it survived even through the depression and it was known to be a very high class entertaining hotel. And if you guys want me to do a video all on the Lowe Hotel and some of just the history of Point Pleasant and the paranormal things that have happened, please let me know. I can do a whole separate video on that. I was going to try to include some of the town's history and just different spooky facts as well as the Lowe Hotel. In this video, I will include a couple pictures of the hotel that my mom actually took um, being inside of it. Uh, you can still stay at this hotel and it is said to be very, very haunted and that if you stay there, you will for sure have some sort of experience, but I cannot fit an entire, I cannot give the Low Hotel or Point Pleasant the justice that it deserves in this video because this video would be like two hours long, but I could definitely make a separate video on, um, like I said, the Low Hotel and just some different spooky things about Point Pleasant in general that could kind of have led to this Mothman um, creature being more prevalent. Um, so please let me know if you want me to do a separate video on that. I have all kinds of pictures and uh, facts from that as well. But like I said, it would just be way too long of a video to try to fit it all in here and give you all the information that you need. So worth noting that this town does have a lot of spooky history, paranormal, and just spooky things that have gone on in this town aside from the Mothman. So I th definitely think that's worth noting when it comes to uh, the presence that this town has. Uh, so basically, like I said, the locals really do uh, take hold to the Mothman and believe him to be real. And they actually have an annual festival in September in Point Pleasant um, that is all about the Mothman. Um, it's completely devoted to the Mothman and actually around 10 to 12,000 people attend this festival annually. So it's kind of, it's definitely gained a lot of traction for the town itself. Now, like I said, um, the first sightings of the Mothman happened back in the 60s and we kind of discussed how it gained traction then even in the 70s. Now, after it gained that traction, the sightings of the Mothman did die down a little bit. I had mentioned, like I said, the Mothman is thought to be sort of a bad omen and people have claimed to see him um, 
right before the Chernobyl disaster, like I said, in the 80s, then later on, even in 2009, 2011, there's been lots of other accounts of that. And so when you see the Mothman, it is not thought to be a good sign. Now, like I said, the sightings really dwindled down, but then actually I found an account um, of a man that happened in 2016. It was a man, I couldn't find his name, but he had just, or maybe you could find his name, but I didn't find it on the specific articles I was reading. But he had basically just moved to Point Pleasant and hadn't even known what the Mothman was. He said he had never heard anything about it, didn't know what this creature was, and he had spotted a creature jumping from tree to tree. Just definitely thought it was weird. Like I said, he thought it wasn't really human and just seemed very off and he spotted it when he had first moved to Point Pleasant, had no clue what it was, talked to some locals, researched it and figured out that he saw the Mothman. He said he didn't even know anything about the Mothman until he saw him for himself. So even a guy that just moved there who had no clue anything about the Mothman or the creatures itself or anything had seen it and thought what the heck was that and then put two and two together so yeah throughout the years the mothman sightings have definitely died down and people have kind of started to talk about him less and less but like i said there was a movie made about him there has still been some very recent sightings and accounts but most notably it is known that the mothman is thought to bring forth bad things one of the most popular being the Silver Bridge. That is the one that I think is pretty much most well known for being tied to the Mothman. Um, but this is a very uh, well-known creature and, and very, in my opinion, uh, publicized in the media, which you don't always see uh, with certain other mythical or thought to maybe not be real creatures. This creature, the Mothman, has definitely had a lot of presence in like the media, even in movies, in modern day folklore. So definitely just a lot of history in general with the town of Point Pleasant and that it can also be worth noting when then talking about a mythical creature that is equated or that is directly related to that town. Um, so yeah, tell me what you guys think. I definitely think this is a little different than some of the other uh, fictional or mythical creatures that we've discussed. Um, I do think this one has a lot more just presence in modern day and even in media. Um, and so you guys tell me what you think of that. Does that just mean it's really over sensationalized and you just shouldn't believe it at all because it's probably made up? Or do you think that that actually means that it's all the more real because so many people are talking about it and even in all parts of the world, like I said, it, the Mothman moved all through America and the US very quickly. You know, even things like the swine flu outbreak, even not even just like a tragedy of something collapsing or whatever, but an actual outbreak of a, of a um, disease. The Mothman has been just equated to so many things that have happened throughout history and so many people all across the whole world have claimed that they've seen him before tragedy strikes basically. So I don't know. I like you guys no, I don't always give my opinions or what exactly I think, but I'm sure you guys can gather. I just don't want to get in any trouble. This is all alleged, obviously. I think this case is just just so insane, just this, these accounts of the Mothman. This is just so fascinating. You could go down the rabbit hole of the Mothman and for literal hours and still be finding new things. Um, so I hope I did it justice in this video, just trying to explain to you what he is and where he's been seen or it or whatever it might be, even some people's theories about how he could possibly be an alien or just otherworldly or even paranormal, um, or even a manifestation sometimes, which I think is very interesting to look at it from that angle as well. Because the human mind is a very powerful thing, especially when you're experiencing uh, very extreme fear, um, your mind can definitely manifest. So. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Did you like learning about the Mothman? Um, do you think he's real? Let me know what you guys think. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. This is a really fun one for me to do and research. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. My scary story email is also always in the description. I hope you guys liked that scary story video. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me and my channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. We are still getting so many new subscribers. I see all your guys' comments. Thank you so much for all the kind words. I've tried to respond to all of you guys. I think I've done a decent job at that. I hope I haven't missed anyone, but let me know how you like this video. Let me know what you think of the Mothman and I will see you in the next one.